third session of the Roman Cookery School is about, is about fish. Looking for fish archaeologically is quite challenging because the bones are very small and are no, normally only found when you, when you sieve the deposits uh, that you excavate from site. But it's even worse in Wales because a lot of the soils are acidic so the bones uh, dissolve. We do have some so evidence for oysters which were popular on sites where the, the inhabitants were following a more Romanized way of life, but um, not a lot from elsewhere. But I'll be talking, talking about two recipes for fish from uh, Roman writers. The first one is from the medical writer Galen, who regards it as being particularly suitable for convalescence. This recipe is called fish leucosomus, which means fish in a white gravy. And we cook it in water with added oil. And you want about five times as much water as oil. And um, it will depend on the size and the shape of your pan. But um, you want it to come up about a third of the way up the fish. And we want about inch, inch and a half of leek and some dill, but only use the stalks of the dill because the, uh, the meaning of the word leucosomus is in a white gravy. And if you put in the leaves, the, they will come off and turn your, your gravy flecked with bits of green. We put that in and then we put turn on the heat bring it to the boil and as it boils as it as it heats up we shake the pan to emulsify the oil and the water. The other thing you need to do to keep the gravy nice and white is to make sure that uh, you've got rid of all the all the, the the blood in the fish. Galen says that this recipe is suitable for fish which is part way between firm and soft in flesh and he, uh, he, he mentioned specifically sole which is very good for, for it but I like monkfish as well but any, any reasonably firm white fish would be, would be fine and you could, you could cook them in steaks as well as or fillets as well as uh, um, the complete fish The water has started to boil and I'll give it two minutes from, from here before turning it over. A thicker cut would require a bit rather longer. Right, at this stage we want to turn it over very carefully Just lift out the part way through cooking. We need to add a little bit of salt, not too much, because otherwise the whole thing will be too salty. Okay, back. because the gravy does reduce. Right, that should be done. Right, 
And there we are, it's nicely done. Our second recipe is from Apicius and it's a herb sauce to serve with fried fish. And we start off with the spices in the mortarium. First, we measure out our spices. We want a quarter of a teaspoonful of pepper, a teaspoonful of cumin and two teaspoons of coriander. And I'm parching these in the in a frying pan over a low heat because that always makes them much easier to grind. You use a dry pan and they're done when the Spices are brittle and they give off a nice warm aroma. So now we need to grind them. With also a pinch of asafoetida which is a powder, so it doesn't need being ground. Very strong, so we only put a small amount in. The sauce has a name which is Greek and translates as herb sauce and the herbs we're using are oregano and rue. We talked about rue in the first session. As I said then, not recommended for pregnant women. If you brush up against it in strong sunlight, it can give you nasty blisters. It's very strong, so we don't want too much. And then oregano, which is very readily available. This one's from my garden too. If you don't have fresh oregano, you could use dried, but it might be an advantage to parch that slightly before you start. And then of course you would need to rub it down rather than chop it up. You want about two tablespoons of oregano. And then we grind them too. The little stone grits in the mortarium, which are a standard feature in Roman Britain, help to make the grinding very much more easy. The pestle I'm using is a replica of a Roman type which we archaeologists call elbow pestle. Apicius almost always lists spices before herbs and other liquid ingredients because it's very much easier to grind the spices on the dry mortarium and then add the others later. There's one date which we need to chop finely because otherwise it will be very difficult to grind.
we add that to the mortarium and start grinding again. We want one teaspoon of runny honey. Two teaspoons full of fish sauce. One tablespoonful of vinegar. And two tablespoons of the grape juice concentrate that the Romans called de frutum. They made it by boiling down grape juice. Just how far they boiled it down depends on which uh, ancient writer you read. It, it, some describe it as being reduced by a half, some dis describe it as being reduced to a third, others just say that it's thick. And we want two tablespoons of that. We mix all that up together with two tablespoons of olive oil. And we decant it into a small pan to heat on the stove. Coat the fish in a little seasoned flour. Heat some olive oil in your frying pan. And fry the fish for a few minutes on both sides. Heat the sauce, stirring it to keep the oil mixed in. Turn the fish when you think they've had long enough on the first side. That's nice and brown. These are mackerel fillets, which are very good with this strong sauce. But you could use any other sort of robust fish. This amount of sauce will do several pounds of fish, but this evening I only need enough for one, so I'm cooking two fillets. The fish is now done, so we'll turn the heat off. And add a tablespoonful of the sauce. Any leftover sauce can be stored in the fridge. It will keep for several weeks.